in the history, people will say you were a fighter. We are fighters of uh, information, of uh, freedom. We are the last windows opened. Otherwise, it will be a blackout on Burundi. Burundi's media has always been pretty, pretty active. I mean, it's one of the things that they take a lot of pride in here. But over the past few months, uh, most of the journalists have fled uh, under threat of, of killings, under threats of arrests. And a number of offices of independent media have been firebombed or just destroyed, uh, allegedly by government forces. So we're going to go right now and see one of the local media offices that's been firebombed. Uh, there's police standing outside. We're not sure if they're going to let us in or not. But we're going to go take a look and see. Bonjour. Can you see it? Right here? Can we go inside? Can we go inside here? We can't just film inside here, the Renaissance office? We're being told that we can't uh, we can't even film the building. Uh, but you know those bullet holes, uh, looks like the bottom part's been burned out, glass is broken, uh, and there's three or four police officers here who are relatively polite, but they don't want us to film anything over here. Um, from this independent media station. That chief. The chief said we can't, we can't film. <laughs> right now we're headed to Radio Public Africa, uh, RPA. And it was the most popular station here in Burundi uh, until it was firebombed. You can see the slogan right here translates to the voice of the voiceless, uh, but apparently that voice has been shuttered. So during the night of the coup attempt in May, uh, this building was actually attacked and they wanted to silence all the news coming out about what was happening. So, so we'll stop right we now. To respect the guy. Yeah. Okay. We're being told it's forbidden to enter and it's also forbidden to take pictures of, of this. We've just arrived at uh, Iwachu. It's the last independent newspaper, the only one still printing. Um, and we're gonna talk to them about the threats they faced and uh, what's still going on and how they're able to, to continue to function. So this right here is the cover of the last issue of Iwachu. Um, these three people were killed on July 1st in an opposition neighborhood, uh, allegedly by police forces. Clearly this isn't what the government wants to be shown but it's also clear that their threats and intimidation against media aren't really working in this office right here. What's the situation like right now for media in Burundi? You know, it's not easy working alone. There was um, freedom of uh, speech and now it's, uh, it's like Pyongyang. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Pyongyang, North Korea. <laughs> Are you fearful right now? I mean, is there threats on you, on your employees? Are they scared? <laughs> I think we are crazy. Uh, but we choose to stay. I made a meeting with my team, with my staff, and I asked them, we have two choices. We close or we continue. I don't want anymore to feel uh, obliged to continue. I will understand if someone of you choose to stop because it's very dangerous and uh, everybody choose to continue. I was very, very proud of my team. Where does the bravery come from? How do you, how do you make that choice? We are the last windows opened. Otherwise, it will be a blackout on Burundi. There is nothing. Otherwise, there is a, a media for government, and uh, what we see there, it's a propaganda. In the history, people will say, guys, you were a fighter. We are fighter of uh, information, of uh, freedom. I think for a little journalist, in a situation like this situation in Burundi, we have no choice. We have to continue. <laughs> 